Bingo. Okay. Happy hour 2010. Like I said, I hope you all have uh, have your you know happy hour in place. And it's going to be a happy hour, right? We're going to have fun, I hope. All right. All right. Let's get started. We'll start off a little lighthearted. So the federal government just recently announced a new form 1040 easy. Uh, they extended the deadline, by the way, to July 15th. So there's some value added. If you didn't know, you don't have to file your taxes by April 15th. They give you a, a stay for three months, uh, which is a big help. They give you a chance to get back to work if you have to pay taxes. But anyhow, IRS has a new form. Very simple, easy, just one line. How much did you make? Send it in. All right, that's a joke, folks. Okay. <laughs> Here's another one. Uh, somebody said, yeah, I'm a little worried about my, two, my new tax software. It's recommending I slip across the border to Canada. Uh, and if that's your plan for this year, uh, good luck. Uh, Canada closed the border weeks ago. All right. But when I think about um, the, this coronavirus and everything that's going on, I'm reminded of an image of a guy standing on a dance floor in the middle of a bar that's burning down. Everybody's running around everywhere. And this guy's in the middle of the dance floor going, yelling to the top of his lungs, everybody, nobody, don't panic. You know, it's just like, what we need to do, everybody, we just all need to just calm down, all right? Let's just take a, a big deep breath and, uh, we all need reassurance. Hey, I need it. Rachel needed it. You all need it. We all need it. I get that. But from day one, uh, I knew that this too shall pass. And, you know, I've been through, I don't know if you all remember the year 2000 when we thought the world was going to end because the computers were all going to lock up. Then there was 911. Then there was the mortgage collapse. And now it's, the year of the coronavirus. This one's bigger, I admit, it's hit the whole world uh, uh, and all that. But you know what, this too shall pass. It, it's gonna be all right. Maybe not today, but eventually, all right? We're gonna get through this. I've been in touch with a lot of people over the last three or four weeks and nobody has come to me saying, I want my money and I want it now. You know what I mean? We're all in this together. The bankers, they've got mortgages and people they owe money to, and they're getting hit. So just relax, take a deep, big, uh, deep breath, and we're going to be fine. And the other, the other word of advice that I can give you on just a personal level would be to stay positive. It's difficult, especially when it's outside, you know, it's gray and overcast um, for, you know, five days in a row or whatever. But here's what somebody taught me a long time ago, is that the human mind cannot occupy two thoughts at the same time. And so when you find yourself feeling down, do everything you can to just switch the channel. Think about something you like, you know, turn off the TV, go for a walk, take the dog for a walk or, or just do something different, but think of something different because your mind won't be able to occupy the same thought that you previously had. Um, it, it was last Saturday night. I got down, you know, we all do. The difference is I didn't allow myself to stay down. I was down for about an hour or two. What it was, I'll, I'll share it with you. I thought, oh my God, it's only April, whatever it was, April 4th. And I've already done everything on my list. What am I going to do the rest of the month? And by April 5th, I had a list this long or whatever. Whatever it is, it does, it's not going to be that bad. So try, I just want to Im impress upon you, stay positive. And when you catch yourself being down, it's okay. I get that. We all get it. And now switch the channel as fast as you can. All right. It's not going to do you any good to just stay down. I do want to give you uh, some uh, uh, some good stuff that's going to come out of this coronavirus ID. Yeah, um, uh, ID 19. Um, 
Yeah, there's a lot of bad stuff. That's pretty well documented. Here's some good stuff, all right? First of all, the whole world is going to be rested. I mean, like everybody's running around to, you know, their jobs and meetings and soccer practices and softball practices and whatever else. And we don't have anything to do now. And so now we're all, get, I don't know about you, but I'm getting a lot of sleep, all right? Hopefully you are too. We're finding the families are getting to know each other a, a lot better, you know? I was at dinner the other night and my, I, I saw my son over there. I go, oh, you're still living here? You know, <laughs> he's 23, so, you know, he's in and out a lot. But, uh, but seriously, it's an opportunity to get around the table, share some family time, and, and play some games, do some stuff, get creative. It's an opportunity to uh, instill some healthier living habits, start doing some walking, start uh, doing some, uh, some uh, bicycle riding and other, just change the habit up, just change, break that old uh, mold that, uh, that you were in and try something different. Now, the flip side is, is that, you know, we can create some bad habits like, you know, binge watching your favorite Netflix for the past week. <laughs> Hopefully you're not doing that, but it's an opportunity. And I hope you take this opportunity and make the most of it. Um, because I believe that through any of these uh, crises that we've been in, you can choose to either be a victim or a victor. And I personally choose to be the latter. I'm gonna be a victor. And in these situations, there's restrictions put on us, there's also opportunities. And I want to challenge you to look for those opportunities to better your life. This is a fantastic opportunity for you to become a better person and to improve your life. And I can't tell you where it is because I don't know well, you that well enough. But if you look closely at yourself, you'll find it. It'll be there. All right. So I, I challenge you with that. It's a good time to get uh, caught up on house projects um, on the honey news. You know, my wife asked me, well, you know, can you take care of that honeydew? And I, I spin around at her. I said, listen, man, you don't have to remind me every six months. All right. I'll get to it. All right. But, but actually, it's given me an opportunity to catch up on some of that stuff. All right. Um, more importantly, we're also learning how to work from home and how to do things from, from home, which quite frankly, I'm hoping that corporate America will take seriously and encourage people to work from home more. Now, I get it that many of you can't. I get that. But for a lot of Americans out there, it might be an opportunity for them to spend an extra 20 or 30 percent more of their time at home working from home and corporate america i'm hoping will find that it's more efficient at full service property management we have never had commercial real estate we have never had an office from day one we were working from our home and all of our staff work from home so when this thing hit <laughs> i mean it impacted us but not like it hit somebody. I've got a rental property that is uh, managed by somebody else. It's out of the area. And I got an email today from my property manager saying, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're locked down. Your, your rent check, um, it's, it's going to be a while because <laughs> they are just caught up. They don't know what they're doing, which way they're going. And for us, we didn't miss a beat. It was really pretty cool that, in that regard. Um, it's also an opportunity for to explore new places and things from the internet. There's a lot of concerts going on um, on the internet. Museums are opening up. Um, I watched a, a concert of Willie Nelson's uh, recently where he had a whole bunch of performers on there. It was actually pretty entertaining because each performer was in their own home. And some had recording studios they could record from and or do their, their performance from and others were doing it from their living room or kitchen. <laughs> it was pretty very. But anyhow, there's an opportunity to be entertained. And I don't know if you've done any happy hours with friends. I just had a happy hour last night with some friends of mine. So uh, it's an opportunity. There's a lot of opportunities out there. Um, 
There's also some not so good impacts. Um, one of them is that there might be less exercise. I usually go to the gym three times a week. I've been in the gym in about five or six weeks. Um, I'm doing some walks, but that's not the same. Um, and, you know, I'm hoping you're not doing a lot more fast food. It's expensive in my opinion uh, and not very healthy, but it's available. And so Rachel found this little cartoon where uh, on the one side you have Generation X and you know, on the other side you have a Generation Triple XL. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cute. But, you know, try to eat more produce if you can. That's just my personal take on it. So I want to give you a uh, history, on a, a brief history on this COVID-19. Right. On February 29th, Governor Inslee um, declared a state of emergency. And for the record, and this is not a political statement, I believe this governor has done a marvelous job of handling this pandemic. Um, I believe we're well ahead of the curve, but that's my own personal take and you can agree to disagree on that. Um, so he declared a state of emergency. On March 10th is when full service property management mobilized. It took us, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say 10 days. I, actually, I watched a talk show host um, for a whole week talk about this, uh, this pandemic, this epidemic that at that time was in China and then in, in Italy maybe, or, and maybe one little bit of King County or something. It took me a whole week, and by Friday, I went, wow, this thing's kind of serious. And then Saturday and Sunday, I'm thinking about it. By Monday, I'm talking to the president of our company about it. And by Tuesday, we were fully mobilized. And I sent out protocols to our staff. I said, listen, man, you got to take this stuff seriously, and here's why, and here's what I want you to do. It took two weeks for Governor Inslee to finally put into place a stay at home order in which he declared all non-essential businesses were on lockdown. At that time, that included <clears throat> full service property management. Um, that was on a Tuesday. The following Friday, the Real Estate Association appealed to uh, the governor and said, listen, uh, we're shelter, we're housing, um, we need to be essential. The, um, the governor, agreed under certain stipulations saying that we have to follow certain protocols there are protocols that we were already following i i think we might have added a few more uh, after that but by that friday on march 27th we were in kind of a limited lockdown where our staff are working from home as they usually do they're staying at home but they are doing certain activities outside the home and i'll get into that here momentarily so here's uh, an update from the Seattle Times that they uh, publish every um, uh, every day. And they used to have a cute little chart. Right now there are 9,100 confirmed cases in the state of Washington. When you compare that to what could have happened, um, it's staggering. Um, if you look at what uh, New York State, which was slow to respond, I think, did, uh, yeah, this is this is this is great news. I'm sorry to say, um, of that of those 9,100 cases, 421 uh, deaths, which is only a five only a five percent um, mortality rate, and all the numbers that I have been hearing all along have been an eight percent mortality rate. So with 9,100 confirmed cases. I would have ordinarily expected about 720 deaths, and we only only have 420. And I think that's a testament, one, to us catching this stuff early, and two, the incredible um, medical resources available in our state uh, that we can uh, only have a 5% mortality rate. As you can see on the right there, King County leads the way, as you might expect, Snohomish, and then Pierce, as you might expect, it's the populated areas, densely populated areas. When you go out into, I don't know, some of these outlying areas, 
where you know Vern only sees his neighbor from six miles away once a week. The spread is obviously much slower. The troubling uh, one is, oh, in the lower right, deaths by age. For somebody in my age bracket, 66, 92 percent uh, of the 421 deaths were by for people over the age of 60. And so if you're under 60, and likely you are, you're saying, oh, phew, good, lucky me. Yeah, well, here's the problem <laughs> is you might go out and get the virus and pass it to me. All right. That's the bummer. So if you would, for my sake and for everybody else's sake, please follow that stay at home order. Uh, it seems to be working when we follow it. <clears throat> so here's some expectations. And Sorry, you guys, gotta keep, I gotta keep wetting my whistle. <clears throat> this is not, uh, the first one is not an expectation, it's a reality. Uh, we have made America great again, whether we want to or not. Uh, there are currently, depending on which, who you talk to, 1.6 million deaths worldwide right now, excuse me, 1.6 million confirmed cases worldwide, not deaths, world confirmed cases worldwide, 1.6 million. Over 25% of those are concentrated in one country. And you get three guesses, the first two don't count. And if your third guess starts with the initials US of A, you would be right. So yeah, 460,000 cases. I believe, I mean, I really kind of wanted to run a, a, uh, a lottery on, you know, who would get the closest number. I'm thinking it's going to hit 700,000. Uh, I don't know. Uh, of that, we, um, oh, second place, 150,000. One third the number that U.S. has. That would be Italy and Spain. Um, it's interesting to see if India catches up to us. Obviously, China never made it to that. Uh, so again, we were slow to, the, as a nation, slow to, uh, to respond. I'm not going to make any more of a comment on that. But um, I think we can expect in the coming weeks uh, that, well, the Washington I expect will peak, I would say, in, I said two to three weeks last week, I had an owner's happy hour uh, last week. I said two to three weeks then. I got a feeling it's going to probably be one to three weeks now in Wash, excuse me, Washington State. We have a, a stay-at-home order May 4th. Um, I would expect that Governor Inslee will, I'm not the governor's son, <laughs> or or dad or anything, so I don't even know him. But if I had to guess, I got a feeling that he might relax some of it and let some of the people go back to work. But I wouldn't plan on it um, because what's going to happen is there'll be these back waves happening where if he releases people and it, oh we all start you know going out to the bars again boom, you know, all of a sudden those five lingering cases in King County instantly turn into a, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, and we're back in the lockdown. So I'm expecting on May 4th or before, right before May 4th, he's probably going to extend it at least a few more weeks. I'd be a little disappointed actually if he doesn't. I do want to uh, share with you guys I don't know if you can see this on my uh, on my iPhone. Um, there is an app that will screen you for uh, the coronavirus. It's not a lockdown. It's not a test. All right, but it, it is a screening tool. It's an app. It's called Apple COVID nineteen, and I want to share this with you so you can share it with others. And I I took the app. And it asks you some questions. Are you experiencing these um, symptoms? And you can 
you know, tap on the ones that you're experiencing and ask you a bunch of other questions, where you've been and a bunch of other questions. And by you get done at the end, they say, yeah, you better go get tested or not. So again, Apple COVID-19 app, check it out, particularly, uh, particularly if you have any doubts. All right. Uh, people tell me my, my, my voice is different. Um, it's been like that, but I do have sometimes a cough and it worries me sometimes. But I've had this cough for several years, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, let's get to the money. All right, show me the money. Uh, what was it? Two weeks ago on Friday, the Congress passed and President Trump signed into a law a $2.2 trillion a uh, dollar pack bailout package or economic stimulus package excuse me it wasn't a bailout that's for the corporations economic stimulus package before i get into that i thought you might be interested i saw this on the internet one time i thought you might be interested jeff bezos owns amazon which during this pandemic i'm sure is worth a couple more zeros than it is now but this is how i imagine jeff bezos um spelling his name you take the b the e get rid of the twos and the dollar signs add an s and that's jeff bezos and that's how he spells his name right but anyhow this is what congress allocated 2.2 trillion dollars and folks if you don't think this is going to trickle down to you and me then you're sorely mistaken it will be impacting all of us all right and there's a lot of free money out there floating around. We're gonna to get to that in a little bit. Um, and there's just, a, quite frankly, um, for those who are willing, take, willing to take advantage of the opportunities and become victors in this pandemic, stay tuned. I'm gonna run through this real, real quickly. It's, it's staggering, all right? Just simply staggering from my perspective. 150 billion is going to the state of which almost 3 billion to Washington. That's just in discretionary money for the state to use for economic use or whatever they decide. Another 45 billion is going to go to the states through the disaster relief fund. And some of that is earmarked for uh, housing and stuff like that. So, uh, so 45, if you do the math, um, I think it's roughly about one, an additional billion in the state. And again, we live in King County, the most popular, or Snohomish, uh, the two most populated counties in the state. So you can imagine that a good a portion of that billion dollars is coming here. I mean, it just is mind staggering to me how much that is. 30 billion to education and higher ed to help help them out, the schools and stuff like that. 25 billion to our transit systems to improve them and I don't know what. The rest of it is in smaller amounts of four and a, almost four and a half billion to the Center for Disease Control. They will disperse that out to the states for uh, actually, this is actually response to the coronavirus pandemic. The other stuff, that was just economic stimulus. This stuff in the National Guard stuff is what they're going to use to actually uh, uh, control and constrain uh, this virus uh, uh, and to fund uh, practitioners, hospitals, uh, first responders, uh, whatever. Another 500 million going for lending to small businesses, cities, and states. If you are a small business, there's a whole nother thing. I'm a small business. There's money out there available for you. Come see us as a business person, all right? Um, another, uh, another 400 million for election security. Um, I'm surprised actually that the, uh, that the president signed this one in to law, but anyhow, um, sorry about that, didn't mean to laugh. Um, but yeah, to try to make our elections a little more fair this time around, we'll see how that goes. Um, and then the other thing that they've done is They've expanded unemployment. 
They've added 13 weeks on. I pray that you don't have to take a part in any of that. And I fully expect in Washington State, because of Governor Inslee's quick efforts, that you won't have to. That this thing, that in Washington State at least, we will be returning to work a lot sooner than uh, a lot of people in our country. <clears throat> They've increased uh, unemployment checks, I'm told, by um, on average $600 a week. And they expanded it to include uh, people who otherwise weren't covered, which includes part-time workers, um, self-employed workers, and gig workers, which I find kind of an interesting term. And so in addition to that, maybe some of you have heard this and maybe you haven't, and if not, this is a welcome thing. You are gonna be receive a $1,200 check in the mail. Actually, it'll be direct deposited if you filed your taxes electronically, <clears throat> if you, which I think most of us did, but maybe not. Um, so it'll be $1,200 per person, $2,400 uh, for a couple, $500 additional for each uh, dependent child. That money <clears throat> is expected to arrive in, well, realistically, one to two months. Some people in the administration are saying two to three weeks. If you want to believe that, you're welcome to. Uh, I don't give this administration a whole lot of credibility. Uh, Bloomberg was reporting upwards of five months. <laughs> I think it's going to be one to two months, probably well after you need it. Uh, I mean, we could all use it right now. But... Um, but it will be coming. It'll be based on, oh, there's income requirements uh, based on your 2018 or 2019 taxes. If you were making like over 150,000 or your name is Bezos, Gates or Buffett, then you're not, you don't qualify. But otherwise uh, uh, that will be coming well. <clears throat> so the question is, well, what should I use it on? Well, here's one suggestion. Buy another 50 rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> it's amazing to me. Every time there's, there's a crisis, people run out and get more toilet paper. Um, folks, toilet paper is not going to get you through uh, this pandemic, all right? Um, but you can, you know, spend that check and buy some more if you want. If you've had your head in the sand, um, you can... Sign up for a cruise on one of the on one of these cruise ships. I hear they're selling uh, uh, cabins really cheap right now, particularly in the southeast region. Um, I remember at my uh, at the club that I go to, the gym I go to. I'm talking to this guy uh, in the in the locker room, and he was he's Vietnamese. He's a friend of mine. I see him down there all the time, and he was on one of these cruise ships, and they could not, nobody would let them land in their port. And they, had to go, they were going to Singapore and Japan and all these places. And I'm listening to this guy, this is back in February. And I'm like, I was backing up, you know, going, oh my God, am I getting it right now? Fortunately, I haven't. Uh, but yeah, you could do that, I guess, if you wanted. Um, you can also, here's a couple of things, is you can use it for rent replacement. You know, if, if you've deferred your rent, we're going to get into that here in a little bit. You can uh, just, you know, help at that out. There seems to be, and, you know, I'm going to take a time out here. This wasn't on the agenda. But there seems to be oftentimes an us versus them mentality when it comes to housing, the landlord and the tenant. Oh, the damn landlord and oh, the damn tenant. And I'm going to do my best to try to dispel that. Um, certainly in the context of full service property management, we, we treat everybody equally. It doesn't matter if you own, if you're an owner and you own one unit, you own 12 units, or you're a tenant and you're whatever. We just want to help everybody, okay? And seriously, that's my goal, all right? So the other thing that I do want to share with you, we want to help you, and we want to hopefully have you help your the owner of your property, because quite frankly, some of them, 
you know, everybody has this idea that the landlords are fat, fat and rich. And a lot of our landlords aren't. A lot of our landlords need that rent check. And we're, we're mitigating that. We're, you know, we're getting in between and helping with that if, if you've been deferring it. Uh, but I guess I just put a shout out, you know, do what you can to help them. And maybe if the check comes in, if, if, if you can put some or all of it towards rent, that'd be great. Um, and I doubt that you'll be able to do this right now, but if you can put it towards savings. I personally believe that America does not save enough. We're all buying everything on a credit card and got our credit cards up to the limit and stuff like that. Um, I don't want to tell you how to live, but I will try to share with you that um, I've never had a credit card that I could not pay off every month. My, I have, I've been studying success for 30 years now, long time. And so, well, I heard something a long time ago that made sense. It, and that is, is that you borrow on things that depreciate, that, that, um, that, that appreciate, I get that right. You borrow money for things that appreciate, like real estate, uh, uh, collections, jewelry, what, uh, stuff like that. And you pay cash for things that depreciate. And it's my hope and prayer that um, you will pay off your credit cards and get out of debt. I believe all of us would be a lot better if we didn't have the bloody credit card. Enough said on that. Okay, let's get into some resources that are available to you. This is the this is the meat of it, all right? And I want to tell you, there are a lot of resources. There are so many people out there willing to help. My my insur the insurance company for our car, Safeco, I got an email a couple days ago. They said, gee, since there's nobody on the road, we don't have any of these claims to fill. So we're going to give back 15% on your premium. Really? Just like that? So everybody is out there. We're all in this together and we're all helping each other. That's how we're going to get to get, get through this. All right. It's not a me first attitude. All right. Let's all work together on this. So first off, you got that federal incentive check that 1200, 2400, you know, 3400. If you got a couple kids, whatever it is, you got that to look forward to. You've got um, Washington unemployment. It's been expanded. Now we went into that a little bit. This is a cool one. United Way of King County has rental assistance. And what I want to do here, I'm going to try to share my screen here. Uh, and hopefully you all are seeing it. Rachel, not up and down. Can you see a screen that has a, a series of, um, of options? Uh, rental and utilities assistance at the top. Rachel, nod your head. Yeah. Okay, cool. So if you go to United Way of King County, here's rental. You can also, you know, check out for other services, but just for rental assistance. Rental assistance through United Way. They will help you with your rent. All right. You, I don't know what the qualifications are. Maybe it has to relate to poverty levels. I don't know. But if you don't ask, they're not going to help. All right. Um, the Rental Housing Association of Washington put together a list. Whoops. Oh, crap. This list. And here, there's a whole bunch of people and things, Catholic community services, Jewish family services, might be a good time to uh, become a Jew, um, LifeWire, Plymouth Housing, St. Vincent de Paul Financial. There's all kinds of services available. And so you can go under the Rental Housing Association of Washington or just go to King, uh, UW uwkc.org, unitedwayofkingcounty.org, Comcast offering internet essentials package free for low income. Right? You, you may have heard, we'll get to it. 
evictions have been halted. They're saying 30 days. I think it's a lot longer than that. Uh, utilities, discounts, uh, City Light, uh, Seattle Public Utilities, Puget Sound Energy, uh, Snow Pod, all the major utilities and a lot of the minor utilities, water districts, everybody is chipping in here and going, yeah, okay, don't worry about it. It's cool. Take your time, whatever. And then there's some um, um, you know, federal way has some stuff if you're living down there. Oh, this was interesting. Healthcare authority, free cell phones if uh, for low income. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but uh, let's see if I can get back this back. There we go. All right. So um, so you have all of those. Uh, and you know what? I'm not the only guy. That's just what I found. There's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of help out there. All right. All you need to do is put the effort in and you will find it more. There's been a moratorium on evictions for 120 days. And I'm proud to say that King County, um, the full service property management in four years, we have not, we've evicted one tenant. There are jerks. Any help? Nope. Sorry about that. Um, the rest of it, We'll work with you on this stuff, all right? So more time on that. We personally, what full service property management has done is we suspended our late fees during this moratorium. That's what we're giving into this to help you guys out, all right? Because we want to help. So we're suspending the late fees through not just when the lockdown is lifted and you can go back to work. We're going to extend it through the state of emergency after Governor Inslee has given the all clear flag, waved it. We're gonna give you two more weeks after that, make sure everybody is back to work. And then yeah, then the late fees will kick back in, all right? Uh, utility payment assistance, again, uh, they've suspended disconnects, waiving late fees. Um, I do wanna remind you that you are still obligated to pay your rent monies, but uh, just uh, we'll work with you on that, okay? Um, let me go back to that. If you are struggling or you think you're gonna be struggling with rent, reach out to your property manager, all right? It goes back to good communication, guys and gals, all right? Reach out to your property manager. We have, we instituted April 1 mechanisms for uh, helping um, our, our tenants who are impacted adversely. Excuse me, we're all impacted, but financially uh, significantly. And so we have a, a, a resident statement and a, a, a repayment plan, and we'll work with you and help with you. It's all about the communication. And really, to be honest with you, that's all the owners want to. They don't want to shaft people. They don't, they, they want, you to be comfortable in your home and enjoy your home. It's just, you know, get back to it. That will be good, all right? On an operate, here's our, our response on an operations basis. We have renewed showings, all right? So we are showing vacant property, only vacant property. We are not showing uh, occupied property. So if Somebody gives us notice, yeah, we're, uh, we're planning to move. Ordinarily, we want to get in there and start showing the property if we can. We're not doing that, all right? We're not going to invade anybody's property um, while this virus is happening. So we're waiting on vacant property. After it's vacant, then we are showing it by appointment only, two people maximum, our property manager and someone else, the prospect, uh, the tenant prospect. and. What we're doing is we're unlocking the house. The prospect can go in, they can tour the property, come back out, and outside, uh, we can have a, a conversation six feet apart. Personally, I feel pretty safe outside, six, a minimum of six feet apart. Inside, not so confident. So that's how we're approaching this. Uh, we are doing limited maintenance. Uh, any emergency maintenance, we're going into occupied properties on an emergency, but 
we don't have any emergencies. And we want to thank you guys for helping us manage that. So there aren't any. Thank you for managing your home like that. Um, we are sending our guys out on outside jobs, uh, roof and gutter cleaning and yard below what we call yard blowouts because we kind of feel like that's pretty safe as long as again social distancing is in place. Um, they're out there doing some vacant turnovers uh, and again occupied only on emergency. Here's our finance. Here's been our uh, financial response. We've suspended all late fees. We're prorating our the income, uh, the rent to the income, meaning, and this is just a guideline because again, there's no evictions. This, you know, this is just a guidance. We can't we can't force you to try to get you to do anything. But if you're going to be making, you know, half what you're used to making on uh, on uh, at your job or jobs, then our guidance is pay half the rent. You know, um, and and I would say. Tell your insurance bill, your whatever other bills, hey, how about, if, you know, just cut everything back to half and see who's going to work with you. We are handling each situation on a case-by-case -case basis. Again, guys, I can't impress this enough. We want to help you succeed. If you want to succeed uh, and come out of this uh, uh, situation, a victor, we want to do everything we can to help you in that cause. All right. Talk to your property manager about that. And that's our resident statement and proposed payment plan. We're also sending out a resident rent invoice. Uh, and really this is all it is, is just to remind you of how much is accruing. And, uh, you know, I hope that you're able to manage that, keep it as low as possible because when this thing all, gets unwrapped again, then that money is going to come due. We have registered with the, uh, the state for those, some of those disaster relief funds, that $1 billion that's coming in, um, where they might pay rent for you. Not, no promises, all right? But hey, if it is, we're there, all right? And maybe, maybe some of that free money can pay the rent for you so that you can use that money on some other bills. I don't know. All right. We certainly hope that you prioritize um, rent high in that regard. Um, and then we're not going to be uh, reporting uh, to collection agencies any of this stuff. But to be honest with you, you guys are really pretty good. And I don't think that's going to be an issue. So here's uh, kind of our expectations. So we expected in so March, there was no impact. Everybody paid their rent. And it wasn't until, because again, February 29th, you know, the governor um, was when he put that state of emergency in and we thought, eh, it's merely a flesh wound. Uh, you know, if you know Potty Python, you'll get that. Um, and it wasn't until after everybody paid rent, they went, oh crap, we're in this deep. Um, so March, no impact at all. In April, I was project, projecting a 10% uh, uh, impact on our portfolio overall. Um, and it's a testament to you guys. I'm pleased to say we only had a 5% impact. So half of what I projected. I'd love these other two the same. And I'm going to challenge, no, I can't challenge you. It is what it is. I know you're out there just doing whatever you can. Because, hey, I got mortgage too, right? But I'm projecting that maybe as much as 25%. I'm, I don't think it's going to be any greater than that of our portfolio may actually be impacted. I'm hoping and expecting it's only going to be 12%. One thing I'm pretty clear on, it's going to be more than 5%. Because in April, people were tapping their savings accounts and, you know, whatever resources are readily available. I don't think uh, those, I think those resources aren't going to be nearly as plentiful in May and maybe even in June. So I'm kind of thinking that May will be a, a peak. But to be honest with you, through Governor Inslee's efforts and really our own efforts by staying at home, I think we're actually going to beat this thing by June. Things will be returning back to whatever normal is. Uh, tenant survey, uh, we sent out a tenant survey to help us kind of gauge the impact. Um, if Again, if you haven't contacted your property manager, 
uh, do so, please, if uh, you think you might need help. Here's a rental market forecast. I don't know if I thought I'd share it with you. We shared this with our owners. Um, we do expect a dip here for the next two to six weeks, maybe longer, eight, while we dig out of this uh, thing. I'm actually believing that uh, the housing situation will continue. And just so that, because um, I'm a landlord myself, it's not my fault, all right? I didn't create the housing shortage, all right? The, the owners that we manage properties for, they didn't create the shortage either. Um, I do know that in Olympia, I was listening to a podcast today, they are looking at the situation because they know it's not gonna get any better. Uh, and, and so maybe there will be some relief coming in the, in the uh, weeks and months ahead. Um, we are expecting the, there'd be more renewals. Um, there's a lot of instability right now. And I think people are wanting to get some stability. And those that aren't unemployed and, and you know, um, looking, and they're already on their way out. I think there'll be a, a fair amount of movement from people who are like, oh, yeah, they laid me out because of this virus, but I don't even want to go back to my job. That yeah, might create some movement. But otherwise, um, it's our hope and prayer that, you know, you're enjoying your home and that you'll stay there. Um, here's a couple of reminders. We do have a Facebook page. Rachel's been great about updating that. Ditto with the Instagram. Uh, we do have a blog. That's I, I write it, and it's probably more for the owners, but maybe not. We do have a YouTube channel. This uh, is being recorded, and it will be posted up on YouTube. So if you want to, um, if you want to send friends or fellow whoever's to that, maybe other tenants who didn't get the word from their property managers, uh, you can send them to our YouTube channel. So you might want to subscribe to that. And we hope that you will leave us a good online review. Um, we rely heavily on online reviews. We don't go into paid advertising. We figure we'll treat our customers right. We'll treat our owners, our staff, our, everybody right. And maybe we'll get some good reviews. So if you would, maybe uh, leave us a good review on Google or uh, Yelp. And now that is it. We are at the Q&A. After this Q&A, we're going to give away some prizes. Uh, but I'm going to uh, ask Rachel to see if um, there are any questions out there that I can answer before we get into uh, the prizes. Um, so there was more, there was a question about requesting more information on the increased weekly unemployment benefit. Yeah. What's the question? It, it's just that she is asking for more information on it. Oh, um, unfortunately I don't have more information. I was just passing along what I had heard, which is that the, there was going they're going to be boosting the unemployment checks but i have not heard if that has happened or not i assume they have um as you may have heard there's been an unprecedented number of people that have been filing for unemployment um and those checks have been going out uh at the state level i believe um but again I think other states, unemployment, uh, New York, Florida, Missouri, and some of the others, that, uh, in my opinion, mismanaged uh, this, or didn't manage it as well. I won't say that they mismanaged it, sorry. That maybe, actually, I think New York's done a pretty good job of it. They just were in a bad way. But anyhow, um, those, those, those states will probably get uh, a, lot of those, uh, a lot of those unemployment funds. Is there, um, is that the only one? Rachel, are you there? Yep, sorry. There's another question that says, what if we expect to be fined for the next month or two? I'm assuming for rent, but then our financial issues catch up to us then. Resources are often, resources often are available just for immediate advantage. I'm, I'm not catching. 
what do I expect for rents in the coming months or whatever? The um, no, it's. I think she's asking um, about fines in the next month or two if tenants are unable to pay their rent. Oh no, no, yeah, that's it's all off. We have suspended late fees for rent. Anyhow, there will be no late fees through not just this um, lockdown, but through the state of emergency. So once the governor lifts that state of emergency, which I'm thinking is probably gonna be in late May, late sometime between late May and late June, depends on how good we do staying at home. Then two weeks after that, that's when uh, full service property manager is gonna say, okay, now, do you have any, uh, are there any late fees? And we're not gonna charge late fees on stuff that was already in the, in the mill. Um, unless through that repayment plan, you're late, right? So if you promise said, oh yeah, I'll be able to pay this much. And if you're late, you know what? My guess is we're probably not gonna charge anything on the repayment plan. All right, We're, it'll probably be just on anything going forward. To be honest with you, I haven't formulated a policy, but as I think about it, if if the, let's just say the, uh, the governor lifts the state of emergency on May 31, uh, all right? No, excuse me, on June 30th, the governor lifts the state of emergency. We are going to suspend late fees through July 15th. I'm probably, we're probably not going to do anything until July 1, to be honest with you. And then if your July rent is late, yeah, then we're back to normal again. But we want to give everybody every reasonable opportunity to recover from this. I hope that answers the question. I'm running out of my drink. Bartender. All right. Um, is that a, your dark and stormy? Yeah, as my dark and stormy is looking a little low right now. Um, but uh, any other questions? No. No? Okay, cool. So this is the part, I forgot to mention this. I haven't done this before, but y'all should have received an email with a bingo card in it. And if you haven't, uh, I don't know what we're going to do. Because we're going to play bingo. If you have that uh, bingo card, let Rachel know. Pull that bingo card up because I want to play some bingo. We are going to give away uh, five $20 give Amazon gift cards. This is just for fun, you guys. We're going to have some fun here, all right? And I, did send it, I did send the bingo link in the chat for those of you. Oh, good of you. All right. So we're going to give you a few minutes to pull all that up. If you have any more questions, let me know. Otherwise, we are going to, uh, I got to figure out, I've never done this before. So now I got to figure out how I start playing. Uh, play online. Should just, yeah, call it. Here's a call. Okay, cool. All right. Is there anybody who is not ready to play bingo? Let Rachel know if you need a few more minutes. Okay, let's play bingo. And so the first one, this was for owners. So I apologize, the first one's kind of a bad one. Profit, look for profit on your card and check it off, all right? But if you have any, like I said, this is our first time doing this. So if you have any issues, let Rachel know or something. I don't know what we're going to do about it, but we'll try. Profit is the first one. All right, moving right along. And I feel like a bunch of uh, old blue hairs down at the bingo hall, you know. Oh, I got a bingo. Um, all right, number two is house. If you've got house, check that. Well, I think everybody's got a house, maybe. Check that baby off. All right, so we got profit and house. 
Moving right along to number three. It, and when you get bingo, just type it in for chat. To chat and let Rachel know, and she will um, note your name, won't you, Rachel? Okay. Yes, I will. <laughs> number three is tenant. Tenant, yay for the tenants. So profit, house, and now tenant. All right. So tenant is number three. The next one is gratitude. And I think this is all really, I hope it's an opportunity for us to all be very grateful for what everybody is doing. All right. Uh, in our lives, because we're all just lifting each other up, I hope. All right. So gratitude. Number four, the next one is screening, as in tenant screening, right? So screening is the next one. Look for that screening, check it off, all right? After that, so now we have a total of five and no bingos yet. Now we get into the bonus round. Confidence. So we, we, as we start going in here, the tension will mount. You know, I'll start building, getting a drum roll going here confidence all right that's the next one and after confidence is work order all right and uh hey you guys there's a good reminder if you've got stuff you're hanging around your houses and you're seeing stuff submit those work orders Trust me, we're not going to come in, not while this thing is going on. But at least we can build it up because our maintenance guys are at home and they're looking for work. When this thing is all done and over with, then we'll come out there and uh, we'll uh, fix it. And by the way, if you can help our scheduling by telling people, yeah, you can come in anytime. It really helps our maintenance techs uh, with their time. So work order. Next one is property manager. So we've gone through eight. We, we should be getting pretty close to it. And hopefully you're liking your property manager and uh, he or she's doing a great job for you. Property manager, the next one, and this is now number nine is add. The add. I'm surprised we don't have any uh, bingos yet, but this is good. I put in a few I added a few, so uh, maybe that's why. Here, what was the one before add? Property manager. Okay, thank you. So it's profit. I'll go through them all right now just to help. Profit, house, tenant, gratitude, screening, confidence, work order, property manager, add, and the 10th one is duplex. Oh man, people gotta be filling up their cards by now. We've got 10 of these. No bingos yet? Wow, I'm surprised. All right. That's what I'm seeing. All right, here we go. I'm gonna turn on chat so I can look. I want it. No bingos yet. Number 11 is location, location, location. That reminds me. If you are a tenant and you're saving up to buy a house, uh, just know I'll, I'll put a little plug, uh, uh, a little plug in here. We do have uh, agents on staff, and we can help you, um, you know, buy a house. People go, oh, I don't want my landlord to know I'm looking. You guys, come on, man, it's cool. We'll help you buy, buy a house. All right, we'll take care of the owner for you. All right, location, location, location. The next one is inspection. That's kind of an interesting one. I don't know if any of you have your leases renewing during this uh, pandemic, but we're having our tenants do the inspection for us. So that way we don't have to come in ourselves and you know everybody stays at home. Inspection. Dang, I'm wondering if I haven't got the same card. Uh, number, uh, the next one is reports reports so duplex location 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 inspection and reports here we go we're going to keep going next one is trust and that's what we're built on man i hope you trust your property manager 
I hope you trust us. And if you don't, then I would recommend don't renew with us because you need to trust us, all right? Um, it, this whole relationship is built on trust. Next one, I'm surprised we've gone this long. I was expecting we'd have a lot more by now. Investment, all right? Real estate is a great investment, you guys. I want to encourage you. I know your tenants now. I want to encourage you to become uh, uh, owners. Buy a house if you can. Um, I, I really believe it's the American dream. Investment, all right? The next two that are just like a house in a duplex. The next one is condo, all right? Anybody living in a condo out there? Condo, condo, condo. Investment in condo. And the next one, God, apartment. Boy. Oh. Huh? No bingos yet? Apartment? Condo? I got two with that one. <laughs> God, I thought I had the wrong card there for a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> All right. Now we're in the money. All right, you guys. So, uh, so we got three more left is what I understand. All right. Let me go from oh, Peter, just, Don't do shit. What's that? We can get, let's keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Investment, condo, and apartment were the last three. The next one is prospect. Anybody got prospect? Here we go. We still have three left, right, Rachel? Four left. Got four left. Okay. Ooh, this is getting down to it. ROI, ROI, I see two bingos. Yeah, there's, so now there's three left. Three bingos, oh yeah. All right, you guys, it's three crunch bingos. time. It's time to check your uh, cards. <laughs> it's kind of fun, I'm actually having fun doing the calling. Maybe I'll go down to the bingo hall tonight. Oh wait, we're all staying at home, it's closed. <laughs> By the way, I want to wish you all a really a great weekend this weekend, a really big weekend. Uh, all right. Next one is retirement. Retirement. Look for that on your card. Anybody got retirement? We're looking. All right. Nobody's finding retirement, making a bingo out of it at least. The next one is lease. Surely that magic word should spur some uh <laughs> lease retirement and lease i think we're doing blackout at this point hey you guys <laughs> this is vertical horizontal or diagonal all right just to make sure we got all that right now watch all the bingos come in all right so lease was the last one thank you Thank you. And I want to thank you guys for being on this. Uh, good of you. Uh, oh, I can see that we're actually running out of, um, out of contestants. That's part of the problem, too. Um, move in is the next one. We're going to give these dang prizes away, I hope. Move in and health. All right. That is it. I had another poll, but there's only four of us left. And uh, I think I am going to stop there. Um, I think what we're going to do, you guys, I want to thank you all for joining the happy hour. Uh, we might do this again in a couple of weeks, help people out. If there's, if there's information, we will. Uh, appreciate you all signing on. And I want to just leave you with a couple of thoughts. One is stay positive. It's not always going to be easy. There's going to be times when you're going to be hurting, when you're going to be down, when things aren't going to be feeling right. Change the channel. Stay, stay, don't stay down. It's okay to be down. Don't stay down. Change the channel. All right? We will get through this. It will be okay. And you will be all right. And the other is that, I guess that's it, is we're going to be fine. Um, work with everybody. We'll, we're going to get through this together and we're going to be victors in it. Thanks a lot, you guys. Appreciate it. Uh, make it a great weekend, and stay Thank home. Thanks, guys. Bye now.